Hey everyone, it's Natasha here. For today's video, I'm going to be showing you my May bullet journal setup. And yes, I know it's about to be June. I have not gone stir crazy, but I filmed this video a few weeks ago when I was first doing my May setup. And then honestly, I just forgot that bullet journal setup videos have a certain time frame and need to be out at the beginning of the month. And I didn't really want all this footage to go to waste. I also think the theme is not really May specific, it's just sort of like a spring honeycomb theme that you can use for June, July, or August even. So hopefully this setup at least just gives you general ideas on how to set up a journal or gives you a general theme idea for future months. And since we're all in quarantine, the months are kind of blending together anyway. Time is a social construct. I also did another bullet journal video on my other channel with my best friend. And in that one, we sort of go more in depth about how our bullet journals changed over time and what we did from the very beginning to what we do now. We have very different approaches to journaling. So if you want to check that out, the link is below. But anyway, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Only if you want to see more videos, of course. I guess uh, if you don't, that's fine. But if you do, subscribe. And let's get to journaling. My bullet journal is from Minimalism Art. I don't know if there's a better one out there, but this one works for me. I use an assortment of dual brush pens. They have a brush tip on one end and a finer tip on the other. These pens from Statler have a really fine tip and are great for details. I also like to use these Tombow markers that are dual sided as well. And this whiteout for when I make mistakes, which happens a lot. So for the month of May, I decided to do a honeycomb and bee themed setup. When I do monthly pages, I like to have a design for the month on the left side and then the calendar on the right side. So here I'm just writing May in the middle of the page, which I will decorate later. And then I always like to write a quote that I think is important for me to remember for the month. For May, I wrote, always be grateful and come from a place of authenticity. And then in an attempt to draw some honeycombs, I messed up and had to start over and write the title and quote again. And here is my second attempt at drawing honeycombs, which turned out a lot better this time around. I took my time with drawing them so they wouldn't end up looking too lopsided. After covering the whole page in this design, I drew in some bees as well, and then colored in all the honeycombs. Then I kind of decided that all that yellow was a little too plain, so I added some orange for some extra pizzazz. On the right side, I like to draw a small calendar for each month. I count out the spaces so each day is a 3x3 three three square. I know most calendars start on a Sunday, but that just feels kind of wrong to me, so I like to start my calendars on Mondays. After adding in the dates, I added some smaller honeycomb designs on the side to keep with the theme, but they kind of look like little leopard prints. Underneath the calendar, I like to have my events, tasks, and goals. Events go in the bigger box on top, and tasks and goals go in the smaller ones underneath. And then of course, I had to add some more small honeycomb leopard print looking things for extra detail. This layout has worked for me for a few months now, and I like that I can refer to this page for any upcoming events. I also like to add a monthly challenge, which I'll write down in the events box. Basically what I do is pick something I'd really like to do or improve on, and try to commit to it every day for a whole month. Sometimes it works really well, and sometimes it doesn't. For February, I challenged myself to not drink alcohol for the entire month, and that worked great, but for March, I challenged myself to go to bed by 11.30 every night, and I honestly really failed at that. So yeah, it really just depends on the challenge, 
challenge and my level of self-control for that month. But that's it for my first two monthly pages. Here's a close-up look of how ugly my bubble letters turned out in the calendar. My six literally looks like a ladle. My next two pages are my habit and mood trackers. For habit trackers, I draw a tiny separate calendar for each habit. In total, I always like to have 12 habits a month. These include things like reading, working out, meditating, using less screen time, and playing the guitar. For each day that I actually do the activity, I color in the date on the calendar. Honestly, there are some habits that make a regular appearance on my habit trackers page, but I still hardly ever do them. I guess I'm hoping that one day I'll suddenly become consistent with it and it becomes a habit, but until then I'll just keep putting it here. At the bottom, I drew a small beehive in the corner and then added some more bees around it throughout the page to stick with the theme. I also ended up changing my mind again about the color and decided I preferred orange over yellow for the titles. And now for my mood tracker, I like to draw it horizontally because I make a graph to track how I'm feeling throughout the month. And in case anyone was wondering, my bubble letters are still ugly. So after drawing those wonky bubble letters for the title, I measure out the graph to make sure it's even and can fit all the days of the month. On the y-axis, I have my emotional state, which I've split into three sections just so it's easier for me to figure out what my exact mood is for a particular day. And on the x-axis, I have the days of the month. I used to use a color-coded method to track my mood, but I like the graph a lot better since it's easier to see how my mood changes throughout the month since, not gonna lie, my emotions are sometimes all over the place. So, it's really easy for me to pinpoint what's causing them in a graph where I can clearly see the ups and downs. But, to finish off the page, I added a section of honeycombs along the outside of the graph and some more bees. Drawing all these honeycombs was somehow both really soothing and really frustrating at the same time, but I really like how the page turned out. I also like to dedicate two entire pages to writing down three things that I love about myself and three things that I'm grateful for every day. This one has a really simple design featuring my signature ugly bubble letters. And here's a close-up because I really think they've somehow gotten even worse this time. And then I just added some borders so the pages wouldn't end up looking too plain, but would still give me enough space for writing. And here's one of the bees I drew. She's a little wonky, but I still accept her. I love designing weekly spreads, and I like to do a different layout and design for every week to switch things up. Sometimes I change up the organization and how I divide my tasks depending on the week. For this first week, I went with this basic rectangular layout. I like this one because there's plenty of space to write down everything I need to do. I did a yellow and black color scheme with mostly black boxes and also a few yellow ones to make it a little more interesting. I have four boxes on each page, one for each day of the week and then an extra one for my weekly tasks and goals, which I like to use to see what my priorities are for each week. Sometimes I also do a weekly challenge as well, similar to the monthly challenge, I try to commit to doing whatever I've chosen every day for the whole week, but it's on a smaller scale and something that's less pressing than the monthly one. And this page wouldn't be complete without some honeycomb designs, which I think ended up looking really cool. A 
Although I'm not sure how I feel about these weird looking bees that I added. And the first week is complete. For the second week, I went for a more fun design and had each day as a honeycomb shape. I've done weekly layouts like this in the past with other shapes, but there never seems to be enough space, so I'm not normally a huge fan of this type of layout. But this time around, I measured out the hexagons and used a pencil to draw them in first to make sure they were big enough. I also feel like hexagons in general are a more spacious shape than something like hearts or leaves, which are shapes that I've done in the past, so I think this one ended up working a lot better. Once again, I have 8 shapes and the extra one is for weekly tasks and goals. Then I added some more abstract and different sized honeycombs for the design for this one. For the third week, I went for an orange and yellow color scheme. I did long vertical boxes this time with my weekly tasks and goals on the bottom. Even though these boxes are skinnier than the other week's layout, I actually feel like I can fit a lot more tasks in these because they're so long. So this time, I put Saturday and Sunday into one box instead of separate boxes since I didn't need all that extra space for the weekend. My phone didn't work when I tried to film the designs for this page, but I basically just added more honeycombs, so nothing new there. And for the final week, I went with a black and yellow color scheme once again because I like the way those colors look together the best. I decided to do these huge boxes that would give me a lot of space to write my to-do lists. So I counted how big I wanted each box to be and marked the corners of them to make sure the layout would be even. Then I just drew in the lines to create the boxes and made some of them yellow to make it more colorful. I only drew 7 boxes for this week since I squished Saturday and Sunday together into one box again. My phone started getting kind of glitchy when I was filming this week's layout, so some parts got cut off so you can't see the whole process, but I just drew a small honey pot in the corner and added some bees around it. And of course, you can never have too many honeycombs, so there's more of those on the sides. This is probably my favorite weekly spread that I drew for this month, just because of how clean and color coordinated the layout is, and I like the slight 3D effect that I added to the boxes and the cute designs. So you can see how I messed up when I first tried to do the title page, so I'll probably cover that with something later on. And I ended up using the right side as a timeline for my YouTube channel, but here's a flip through of what my actual monthly setup looks like. I really love how the colors and designs came out for this month. The past few months before this one, I did very flowery, nature-themed layouts, so it was fun to switch it up and go for something more bold and geometric. I also hadn't really used yellow as a color before, so I really wanted to use it since it's such a bright color for the warmer seasons.
Overall, even though some of the bees and other designs I drew were a little wonky sometimes, I still think everything looks really cute. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching me do my May setup and found this helpful for your own journals. And I also hope it makes you feel better about your bubble letters if you draw those because there's no way they're as ugly as mine. But that's it and thanks for watching!